Mary Meet Witchlings, it's the Twisted Witch here in Midnight Moon Song, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am out in the backyard with my foster son Hector. Please don't pull on the tree, sweetie. And today we are going to be talking about something that I don't see a lot of people talking about. And when I've asked about it and asked about other opinions, I get very mixed responses. Children and witchcraft, and how to teach them and include them within your craft. Now, where the mix-up happens is the views on the whole subject matter. Some sub, some witches view it as they something that they have to completely figure out for no, themselves. No, 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 no. Did you find a bug? No. Did you? I think you did. Why'd you run away then? He doesn't like bugs at all. <laughs> but some witches like to view it as a subject that they have to find on their own and don't really include much aside from basics where others are the opposite. They include everything that they have about their own craft to to this to this child. So they, they grow up with something. Now, in my opinion, as a witch who has a foster son, I like to show him everything I do. Yes, I don't let him really sit in on rituals and such like that, but I let him see my crystals. He loves crystals. He loves nature. Ow! No! Give me that. We don't hit. Give it to me. Thank you. I include him in my crystal work. He loves looking at my crystals. He loves helping me pick flowers and clover and dandelions whenever I need those. He enjoys that stuff a lot. He loves rocks to the point where I just have a plain old rock that sits in the house and it's his pet rock. He kisses it and says good rock and he gets super excited whenever he sees rocks. This child loves rocks. And that is one place that I feel is the great place to start. Oh, does it smell pretty? <laughs> Did you get in your mouth? Start with the things they love. Pay attention and see where their hearts really lie. This child, like I said, loves rocks. So I start showing him my crystals and telling him about them. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah come on. So we gotta be careful, okay? You okay? Come here. You're okay. okay. Where's your ball? Where'd your ball go? No. I don't know. Where'd it go? There it is. Come on, let's go for a walk. Okay. Yeah, I know. Let's go for a walk and we'll feel better. Oh, there's a stick. You wanna pick up the stick? Yeah. Pick it up. Good job. But you start with things that they seem attracted to. Everything in this world is magical. And you can explain the magic that comes from the things that they like. And if it's something you're not entirely sure of, do research on it. And then you too can learn something. And there your child just taught something new to you. That is a wonderful, wonderful feeling to have that. Let's say Hector suddenly decided to grow away from rocks and start getting to plants. Well, then I would share with him all the knowledge I have of plants. My husband, Noah, is also an herbalist, and he would be more than happy to share with them. I include the baby boy in some of my kitchen witchery. He, he's only two, so we can't do a lot, but he gets to help me mix the bowl. Sometimes he'll add things in. He loves that stuff. He loves the creation of things. So that's where you go. You start with something that fascinates them. And because he's two... They will be fascinated with everything at this age. So what you have to do is share with him the magic of everything that he seems happy with. Everything that seems to bring a smile to his face. Share with them the magic of that. That's where you start. Don't throw it over. No, 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 no. Don't throw it over the fence. You won't get it back. He threw it over there once and Noah was able to get it back with the stick, which is what he's doing there. But yes, that's where you start. You start with their interests. And from that, you can expand. Like, this little boy loves rocks. So I showed him my crystals, and I told him about those. And that's what he loves. He also, like me, loves to eat. He's, he's an eater. He loves food and everything about food. I make him lunch, and I get, ooh, pretty, when I set the plate down in front of him. So I started letting him help me cook a little bitty things and letting him help me taste them. Like earlier today, I made pineapple jam and 
I let him watch me cut it and put it in the pot. He got to have a little chunk to himself. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. I'm okay, I'm okay. And after it was done, he got to taste some. I got to incorporate him in that process and he loved it. And that's where you branch off. You branch off from stuff like that. As he gets older, I'll teach him more about crystals and more about the other types of rocks that catch his fancy. And then from there, I'll branch off onto the ones that don't really catch his fancy, but instruct him and show him that even these ones that he might not think are very worth something are and have energy attached to them as well. But that's where you have to start, slow with their own interests. And when it comes to deity work, I think is something that a lot of pagan users kind of feel uneasy about because they don't want to just force a deity onto them. Now what I've done is I allowed him to see my altar room, to look at all the stuff on the altars, and he was actually attracted to Set. It was pretty interesting. Set, for some reason, attracted this baby. His energy just made him feel good, and he giggles, he laughs, and he sometimes he, he'll just look at the picture and talk to it. When he got really, really sick and his fever started going up, and I was really worried because the fever wasn't going down at all and it was up to 102 and I was scared I was calling the doctor and I was taking the temperature under the arm so I was told by the nurse that if it's 102 under the arm it's still okay and if it gets to 105 under the arm then call in as I had no car because we only have one vehicle and my husband was at work so I began to freak out and when the baby would go to sleep I went upstairs into my altar room and I wasn't sure what to do. And then I remembered he really seemed attached to Set and the things that symbolized Set. So I called to Set. I lit incense and called to Set and started praying and begging him to help keep this baby safe. I said I didn't know why, but this baby loves him and he needs help. So what happened? Well, the incense that was just traveling upwards, started to curve and flow around me. And that made me feel so much comfort. I felt just this immense comfort on me and like this weight lifting off my shoulders. And inside, in my mind's eye somewhere, I just heard something to let me know, not with physical words, but just let me know it's okay. No, I don't want to sit, baby. I'm going to walk. Come on, let's walk with me. Walk with me. And I thanked him. I did channel my other deities after that and thanked them and asked them to be with him as well. But I directly gave Set an offering. I didn't quite give an offering to the other deity. I just gave them thank you as a verbal offering. And when I did that, when I went downstairs, Little baby boy was just starting to wake up and after that he started eating better I didn't have to constantly try to keep keep him eating and keep him drinking he kept the ice pack on his head because he was hot and he took his medicine well and then all of a sudden the fever just started going down and I had been struggling to get that fever to go down I had to hold the cold ice pack on his head I was trying to keep him drinking because he didn't want to drink or eat anything. And I was like, no, honey, here, take a drink with me. Take a drink. And, and it was just not going well. And then all of a sudden, and it seems strange if people who know Set, but in research, if you really do research on Set, before he was seen as a very vengeful, angry deity, he was a deity of love, surprisingly. He was a deity that, that was love. And this child, even though he's a part of our family, he came from outside our family. And for those of you who know Set well, Set's a deity of foreigners. So it just seemed right that he would look over this child. And I think, I feel wholeheartedly that he was the one who helped him, who helped that beaver go down.
And that's what I mean. Start, look at things that they, they, they attract. He seemed attracted to a symbolism of set. So that's the deity we've gone with. We talk to him about set. We talk about set with him. So he knows what that deity is. But we don't just talk about that deity. We talk about our other deities too. We talk about the other deities that are in the pantheon that Set belongs to. And when he gets older, we'll talk about more of those deities. Careful. Careful, I'm going to take the stick away. We'll talk about more deities that are in that pantheon. And we'll expand from there to other deities that are like Set that are not in that pantheon. No, don't hit that, baby. Huh? Don't hit it. Come here. Okay. Come here, please. I'm going to have to take it away. Okay. okay, come on. And that's what I mean. That's, that's the whole point of it. You start with what they show you. And when they're ready, and when you feel they're ready, you'll introduce them to more. And from what they like, you can expand their interest right into what yours are and what you stand for. And that alone can be a great thing. And let's say you don't follow a deity, but they seem attracted to a specific something that does have a deity often attached with it. Hey, 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 hey. You be nice to the tree. Okay, come on, give me the stick. It's time for me to take the stick now. Oh, did you kiss it better? Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you're so sweet. But yes, if you are not a person who works with dating and you see the child being attracted to a particular object, tell them everything about that object. And this object, if it has deities with it, talk to them about this deity. Because while the deity might not be reaching you, the whatever makes up that deity might be reaching to them. And that's perfectly fine. Engage them in that type of thing. As far as, uh-uh. Okay, I'm gonna take the stick. Yes, thank you. Say sorry to the tree. Say sorry. Oh, good boy. Include them in that. And as far as spell work goes, you're welcome. As far as spell work goes, no, no, no. It's okay to keep them out of that, especially when they're really young. When they're old enough to understand the spell work. Uh, 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 okay, I'm going to take it away again. Okay. When they're old enough to understand it, you can incorporate them into it, a family-oriented big ritual or something like that just to, to sort of show them. One of my friends, when we do rituals of letting things go for the new year and such, she writes things that she wants to let go and she tells her kids to write things like that. And they're really young, so she tells them to write, to write things that they don't like or even write things that they love. And then when she burns their slips of paper, it'll bring in the things that they love, the energy of that love into them. Or it'll send the energy that they feel negatively with away. And it's just something so little and they don't completely understand it, but it's a great way to kind of incorporate them into your work. So they get the feel of that work. It's also really good to have items that you can pass down. And in that, in passing down items, these items have a history. They have love that come with them from generations. And that can be a wonderful thing to help, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> to help the child as they grow. And of course, give them stuff that they're ready to receive. Don't give them something they're not gonna use because they don't know how. Give them stuff they're ready to receive and to take with them. <coughs> These things are important. And even though they might not see how important they are at the time, they will. They will in the future. They very much will. It just takes time and patience. And in the world around them, they will develop who they are. And the more they develop who they are, the more you can share with them with their interest and yours. And the more they're able to understand, the wider and broader their world will become. And that's all you can really hope for. Yes, there are basics. Teach them with love, compassion of nature, the general basics, sure. And the respect for everything the world has. Yes, obviously. 
but there are a few things that are more unique and that's okay well this video is through Hector you want to say goodbye <laughs> did you want to wave Look over here. Tell everybody bye. <coughs> Look over here. Say wave. Yo, bye. Over here. Hmm? Look at the camera. Say bye. Bye. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> and wherever you are, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to <laughs> be sure to have, ring that notification bell. And we will see you next time. Blessed be, witchlings.